Hello and welcome to another video of this series RF for Microsystems. This series belongs to a teaching class at TU Berlin and we will be investigating models and concepts to describe transmission lines and microsystems. For today we start with the very basic concept of the model for a transmission line. The goal here is to not have a solution that's specific for microelectronic packaging but a very general description of a transmission line that you can also use in many other contexts. Contexts, okay, let's get started. So when we look at a transmission line and we want to build a model, first we have to think of the components we can use. So in order to do that, I will have to pick one example and there are many different types of transmission lines, but one that is very known is a coaxial transmission line. And I would like to just make a quick sketch of that. So you would have some inner conductor and some outer conductor, which would be grounded usually. And what we want to describe is the propagation of a voltage, say with a U, along this line. And the first thing we have to do to build a model for that is to have an axis, let's call that Z here that will go along the transmission line. So it's a one dimensional problem. Now what we want to do is we want to start with some voltage U0 and we want to describe how this is propagating. Let's put a switch here and on the other side we would have something that's a load. We'll call that RL for a load. And we want to understand when we close that switch how the voltage is propagating along the line. So this is the, the problem. Down here, as I said, we have a ground. And since we're still looking at the one dimensional problem, this would be Z. Okay, so what can we do? There are several things we could try to calculate, but first we wanna start with building an equivalent circuit model. The nice thing about an equivalent circuit model is that we can take components and laws that we understand that are known. Sometimes they're even pretty simple and we can build an analytical description out of that. So usually what we have here is that the whole line has some resistance, some capacitance, some inductance. So in our case only passive components and we want to find a description that is based on those basic elements, these lumped elements, to make the description for the distributed components. Okay, and what we wanna do is we will start by slicing that and just looking at a tiny slice of the length delta Z. And we will find a model, an equivalent circuit that describes just a sliver here. And how we can do that is the following. First, we have to think of the components that we can use. We will not use any active components, we have no um, amplification, no other elements, so it's just passives. First start with resistance, so we will have some resistance that goes along the line. So when we start here, we will have some resistance. And I will call that our prime for now, we'll explain that later. Also, we will have some inductance that goes in line here, and those are called the serial loads. I'll abbreviate that here, for our model. Now, the capacitive component will mainly be between ground and signal line. So in our model, it would come here. This is the ground line. And also, we could think of that the ground and the signal are not 100% isolated. So we could have some current going there. And this is put not in terms of a resistance, but a conductance. So capacitance and here conductance. And those are also all primed. Now those would be called our parallel loads because yeah, they're not in series but in parallel. And this is all the magic. This is all we need. Now, let me say just one thing about those primes. The units of those descriptions, so our prime has not the unit of ohm, but ohm per meter. That means every time we want to have the resistance of such a sliver, we would have to multiply that times delta z, and then we would get something 
that is, let's put it like this, uh, that has the unit of ohm. Okay, the same applies to everything else. So just to be complete, for the inductance, we would stay with something that's Henry per meter. And for capacitance, we would get something that's Farad per meter. And for the conductance, something that is Siemens per meter. And all of these would have to multiply by delta Z. So the width we have here to get a description of how this portion is behaving. And in the end, we can piece all of that together to get a solution. Now, how can we analytically calculate current and voltage? Because this is what we're interested in. This is, let's call that position. Let's take Z. And then back here, we would be at dead Z plus delta Z. Okay, so we have a voltage here and a current. And in the end, we would have the voltage at Z plus delta Z, so U, and the current at the same position. Now we can get together quite some information by looking at Kirchhoff's laws. If you remember Kirchhoff law, we had a mesh rule and a node rule, and we'll apply both of them to get some equations. Um, we can start with the mesh rule. Okay. The mesh rule, if you remember, is when we go in a mesh, so if we perform a closed loop, the sum of all voltages along that mesh has to be zero. It's pretty clear. So when you start at some position and you go in a closed loop, you will have to be at the same position, the same voltage in the end. Okay, so we start here. Let's start at this point and we move all the way over here. So the first voltage drop we see is R prime, and this is just Ohm's law. So what we will get is R prime times delta Z, because this is then our actual resistance, times the current, and this is the current we have in the beginning at position Z. Okay, then we go over here, then we, hit the inductance. Now inductance again times delta Z. How do we get the induced voltage, which will be the voltage drop? If you remember laws of induction, we simply have to get the time derivative of the current. And which current is that? It's still the current of position Z because we have not lost any current yet. Okay. So then we continue our loop. Let me put a line like this. And we go here to the very end and then down here. And you see, we will see the voltage that is U at Z plus delta Z. Okay, all nice. Then we continue down here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And at the end we go here. Now the thing is, this was a drop, a drop, a drop, and now we go the opposite direction, direction we gain voltage, so we have to switch sign. So here, minus u at position z. And all of that, if we string it together, has to be zero. Of course, you could also use the other sign convention, like minus, 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 plus, doesn't matter. It's zero in the end. This was the mesh rule. Second, we take the node rule. And if you remember, the node rule states that when we go at one specific node and we sum all the currents entering and leaving the node, so current this time, the sum has to be zero. Okay, and we will take this node. It's a bit elongated here, but technically this is one node here. Okay, then the first part is Let's start here because it's straightforward. We have current flowing out of our node here. And this is just G times delta Z times voltage. Now, which voltage? It's the voltage at this point here. So Z plus delta Z. And since it's going out, let's label it with a minus so we don't lose our signs in the end. That was number one. 
Number two is some current we lose that is going here. Now, what is the current that we need to charge a capacitor? Again, minus because it's going out. Who remembers? It's just the time derivative of the voltage. Okay, we got that one. Again, ah, which voltage? Again, at the other side, so Z plus delta Z. Good, that's our second term. Then we also have some current going in this direction. So we also have to take minus I at position Z plus delta Z. And finally, we have the current that is going in at the very beginning plus I at Z. And all of that has to be zero. Can we check that? So mesh rule, node rule, and the nice thing we see right here is that we can now connect the voltage current and voltage and current at the beginning. So you have EZ, EZ, UZ plus delta Z and UZ, and here the same, U, U, I and I. So we have now several equations that allow us to describe that analytically and in the next step, which we will take in the next video, we will change the equations a bit, string them together, put some boundary conditions in, and then we can actually solve them and describe the outgoing voltage and current as a function of those four parameters, so R, L, C, and G, as and with the input voltage. Sorry, I lost my track there. Okay, so the, the beauty of that is in the end, we will have equations that are very general, can be applied everywhere. And all we need to know is the R, L, C, and G of a very small portion of our transmission line. And the next video will go through the details of calculating those parts and give us the telegraph equations. After that, we will have some solutions because first we just get the differential equations then we have to solve it for specific cases. So for example, for a static voltage or for a sine wave or some other examples, we'll go through it later. And with that, I see you in the next video.